guys, welcome back. We've got a new bracelet tutorial for you today. We haven't done a paracord bracelet in a while, and this one is a little bit different style than your typical 550 paracord bracelet. It's gonna use 95 cord. If you aren't familiar with that, it's type one military paracord. Um, much thinner and makes for some cool, smaller designs. The design that we're making today uses a lot of macrame techniques, namely the half hitch. And that's a really simple knot, but the order you tie them in and the direction you tie them is what's gonna make the difference in this bracelet. For this project, you're gonna need some 95 paracord. I'm not sure how much yet, I'll let you know on the end of the video. A Little bit hard to predict on this one because it's so complex. You also need a binder clip. It really will help if you can tape that down to your workspace to hold things in place well. And then of course our scissors and a lighter. Let's dive right in. So to start off, we're gonna need to cut our cord down into 10 feet lengths, but I'll let you know at the end of the video how much we ended up using. To make it a little bit easier, I decided to go four lengths instead, and then I'm just folding them in half. So I've got four 10 foot lengths folded in half, so we've got eight five foot lengths then. Um, you can do it however you want. It's nice to have some loops in the end to make our closure for the bracelet when we're all done. Once you have your paracord cut how you want it, we'll just want to line up all of our strands in a row. And again, this four strands makes it a lot easier because we have fewer cords to work with. We just want to lay them out side by side and put them in our binder clip. I'm gonna leave about two or three inches of extra space. Just put them all right next to each other without crossing over. And I'll split that down the middle so we can put our binder clip on and clamp it over all eight strands. Should look about like that. Okay, and then before we go any further, let's tape this down to the table so that it doesn't go anywhere while we're working. All right, now we're set to go. So now to start out, we are going to making a diagonal line across like this. That's just our starting point. So this cord on the far left is gonna be running all the way over to the right. And we're gonna be tying half hitches around it. After that, our method is gonna change a little bit. So the important thing to remember as we're doing this is which cord is continuing on and which cord is being tied around that cord. Um, whatever cord is gonna be our runner, let's just call it a runner, you don't wanna let go of that cord um, because that one needs to stay straight when your knot is completed. So the half hitch, if we're gonna tie a half hitch around this first cord with our second cord, the half hitch just is making a four, or a backwards four in this case, so it's a P, and then we'll bring it up through the hole and pull it through. So now when we hold this one straight, we've got a knot going around that cord. We pull it down tight. We wanna make one more of those. So again, this is our runner. Make a four with the other one, or a P. Our tied on cord is going underneath, so our runner goes on top, and then we bring it down through the hole. And now we have two little loops going around. I'll zoom in close here just for a second. Okay, so now this cord is just gonna stay off on the left, and we're gonna be taking the next cord in line and doing the same thing. So because we're heading over to the right, we're gonna make P's. So this cord goes underneath, bring it up through, or, or down through, excuse me, and pull that cord tight while keeping this one straight. Once more, make that P, and then down through, and pull it tight. In this first one, your loops are probably gonna to wanna to slide through. You don't have to make these super tight, just has to stay in place. So we'll kinda of speed that up on our way across here. Two knots for each cord. All right, so now the cord that was on the far left has gone all the way across and is on the far right. So that's our starting point. We've got this nice bar across the top to continue the rest of our weave. So you can reposition this a little bit if you need to. You can make it a little bit straighter. Um, it's gonna turn into a diagonal in the bracelet. It's not gonna be a straight line. 
Um, but there is our starting place. All right, now that we finished that top bar, ready to do our pattern. Um, this pattern kind of goes in stages, and so it doesn't necessarily matter what parts of it you do first, you just have to complete one stage before moving on to the next one. So I'm going to start on the right side here. Our runner cord is going to continue out two more knots, and then it's going to make an elbow and go back towards the rest of the weave. So to do that, I'm going to keep it going this direction. We'll make two more P's with our runner cord on top. Bring that down through the loop. There's our second knot. So now it's going to make an elbow, going back the other direction. So we're going to make fours instead of P's. So you want to bring your cord underneath your runner cord to make that four shape. Bring the cord through, and we should now pull the, the runner cord with our left hand because it's going that direction. Now we have that elbow. So one more of those knots, a four. So those, that pair is done. Now we'll move on to the next pair. Let's take those two cords. And because we're going to the left, we're going to use the right cord as our runner. So we'll be making fours, just like before. So you want to make two of those knots. All right, that pair is done. Moving on to the next pair. We'll grab that right side as our runner again. Make a four. Tie the knot. And hold on to your runner as you pull the other one down. One more time. And on the last one. All right, so our first stage is done there. We've got an even line going across diagonally following this. We're going to be progressing in even lines like this, but it's going to go this way instead of in, in a perpendicular to our, our crossbar here. So you know how I said that one stage was done? It's wrong. One more step before we end that layer. So we've got this on the left side, we've got a runner going to the left. We want to make an elbow just like in that other side, I had almost forgotten about that. So moving this elbow back, going the other direction, we're going to have our runner over the top making a P, then feed that cord through, tighten that down, and of course one more of the same thing. All right, now we should have elbows that look about the same on both sides of that. They look a little bit longer than your middle, but that's fine, that it's gonna work out. All right, now onto our second layer. And this is gonna be a little bit different because now instead of with starting with a bar like this, we're gonna be weaving over and under. We're giving the illusion that these, these cords here are weaving over and under each other. So to do that, we're gonna leave a wrapping cord from this pair just off to the side so he stays out of the way. And this cord that made the elbow is gonna be running across to the right, but it's not gonna be all on top this time. This time, when we come to that first cord, we want it to go underneath. So that means this becomes our running cord heading to the left, and this is gonna turn into our wrapping cord for a little while. So there's our running cord. We're heading to the left, so we want to make a four. that knot and one more that four again and then cinch that down nice and tight and since the cord is being wrapped around this one it looks like that cord heading over to the left is going on top you'll understand what I mean when we get a little bit further and you can see the pattern developing but for now you'll just have to take my word for it so now that this cord is done, we're going to set that aside. 
So then we're going to take our next chord, which is the wrapping chord from that row right here. So just the next one in line without any of your chords crossing over each other. And this becomes our running chord again, heading over to the right, and this becomes our wrapping chord. So because we're heading to the right, we're going to be making a P with that wrapping chord. Do our knot like normal. And one more. This one's going to stay our running chord for now, and it's going to go over the top of this next row. The last one went under, this one's going on top, so this is going to remain our running chord. And we'll just do the same thing, making P's. Then because we went over this last pair, now we've got to the end pair, and we're going to be going underneath again. So our running chord becomes this one, heading over to the left. It's our second to last chord in the, in the row here. And our previous running chord turns into a wrapping chord. So making a four points towards the direction we're going. And then we have our end pair here. And now this top one needs to be our wrapping chord. And this one continues being our running chord. So heading to the right for two knots and then back to the left, making that same elbow that we made before. So two P's and then two fours. All right, now we're just to the point of repeating what we've done before. So now we're gonna add two knots to this pair, two knots to this pair, and make our elbow with this pair. And now we've completed that stage. At this point, I want to zoom in a little bit and we'll give you a little bit of a picture of how this pattern is supposed to look before we time lapse the rest and just keep on doing what we're doing. All right, so a little bit closer up here. So you can see that this line went all the way across on the top and that was just the start. And now once we get going, this line went over our crossbar to the right. So when you follow one chord here, it goes under, over, under. We want to keep that pattern going throughout the, the rest of the bracelet. All right, so we've repeated that pattern a couple of times and you can see it developing a little bit more here. Each imagined chord goes under, over, under, as it wraps back and forth. So we're making kind of an imaginary braid with this half hitching method. Hope you can see the pattern in the camera there. We're gonna keep going on this and we'll catch you at the end. So there's our finished weave. You can kind of see the, the pattern there. With the over, under, over, under. If you use a solid color, this stands out even more. So let's finish this off and make a little bit of a closure. So on this side, we're going to be taking this middle loop to use as our closure. Um, it's not middle, I guess, but the one just off to the right of the middle. And then on this side, we'll just grab the two middle cords. Actually, let's grab the, the middle four. And we'll make a diamond knot using two strands, um, but doubled up. So you've seen the diamond knot before, so we're going to speed through that. Um, we'll link to a video specifically for that in the description. All right, so there's our diamond knot and our tangle of cords there. And then on this other end, we're just going to tie an overhand knot in that one loop to make a little bit of smaller of a loop. Um, depending on the size of cord that you left over on that end, you might not need to do this. There's a little bit more of a, that's a smaller loop so that our diamond knot isn't gonna slip through. Um, after you've made sure that it is sized right and fits on your wrist, um, you can adjust these knots farther or closer to accommodate your wrist size. Um, but when you find that it's good, you can go ahead and clip the rest of the ends off and then immediately seal them with a lighter so that the cords don't slip through.
Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It was a little bit different of a paracord bracelet, but we hope you're willing to give it a try. If you do, be sure to take a picture and post it up on our Paracorner Facebook group. We'll put a link to that in the description. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.